Hello everyone, welcome again to another Teacher Joseph podcast. This week in my weekly lesson, I'm talking about public libraries. Now, just to let you know, the word library uh, has a kind of an R sound, which is unusual because in received pronunciation, as you know, the R is considered very rude. So we tend to get rid of it. Word, work, arm, France. But here we are with library with a kind of an R sound. And it's one of the few words in English where you hear an R. I think it's because we can't avoid it. There's two R's there. So if we take away both of them, it will become why were we? And some people do say that. But the correct pronunciation is with that slight R, library. There we are. Now, I have to tell you, the world of libraries is actually very exciting. I had no idea. Um, I found a website called publiclibrariesnews.com. Oh, wow. They are putting forward this idea that uh, libraries are under attack and it's full of news about what's happening. One thing I discovered is that libraries in the UK are really not safe. More and more of them are being handed over to volunteers. All across the UK, libraries are being told, okay, you need to run this by volunteers, or we need volunteers to run this library, or it closes. So the government is clearly not withdrawing funding completely, but it's no longer going to pay staff. Now, that's very interesting for a couple of reasons. One, because the whole industry uh, of librarianship or being a librarian is really under threat. It looks like it's something which is being torn apart. Um, you know that there really is not only a skill to being a librarian, but uh, historically the categorization of books with their numbers is almost like a science and is taken very seriously. And uh, it's quite clear that that is under threat. Now, there's two big news stories at the moment on this site, publiclibrariesnews.com. One, uh, they're quoting here, which is from the Daily Telegraph. And we're going to read a little bit about this because it's fascinating. It says here... Books are being banned across Britain. We are not as tolerant as we pretend. Uh, and it's from the Telegraph. Uh, let me just introduce you to it to see what this website is saying, first of all. Um, it says here uh, that a number of school libraries are being asked to withdraw books. And that doesn't mean to borrow the books, to withdraw them from the library. You know, if I go to the library, if I borrow a book, I'm withdrawing it. But no, what they're saying here is that uh, these libraries are being asked to remove the books. Um, and it's because parents are basically saying that there's a lot of stuff they don't want their kids to see. Um, and that affects the amount of stock that libraries have. So let's read this story then. It says here from the Telegraph, the index on censorship, an index on censorship? I didn't know we, we had such a thing. The index on censorship discovered that 28 of 53 British school librarians who were asked, so that, of course, there's many more librarians than simply 53 of them, but 
uh, the Index on Censorship did some kind of survey and it discovered that 28 of the 53 people, the librarians that it asked, they had been asked to remove books, many of which were LGBTQ plus titles. Pressure had come from parents and on some occasions teachers too. And then the Telegraph says, for a society that's meant to be modern and tolerant, these findings are depressing. The cultural wars are failing to subside, that just means go down, and we seem to think nothing of using our children's education as an ideological battleground. Yeah, and that's also made in news in The Guardian. Uh, and both these stories came from the 25th of August. Uh, I'm just trying to access them, okay? So just give me a second, because I'm reading summaries here uh, from this website. Yeah, right. So uh, it's on the library's news website, 25th of August, The Guardian, it was dated the 19th. Uh, and it says here, uh, there's something of a trend targeted at books written by LGBTQ authors. Uh, many parents don't want to see those in schools. And they think that this may be because of something which is happening in the US. They also are beginning to remove books which they think are unsuitable for children. But in the US, it's a bit different because the orders are coming from the governments or different local governments who control certain areas. But we, we of course, don't have that here. Um, it says here, people in school don't know how to deal with that. School library staff are not trained or supported with this kind of thing. So it adds pressure. Um, the school library is the only place it deals with every single uh, year group, which makes it very hard to remove or restrict the use of books, especially since kids use it to learn more about their sexuality. Well, I, when I was at school, <laughs> well, quite simply, sex and sexuality didn't exist in school. Um, if you tried to find a book in the library, you wouldn't have done. Nothing like that existed in our school library. And even in the public library as a kid, uh, if you tried to borrow a book about sex or sexuality, the librarian, well, they weren't really librarians. I mean, they were library assistants. They just would have stopped you and said, nope, sorry, you can't borrow that. Um, so it says here, it's troubling to see reports that LGBTQ plus books are being removed from school libraries. Uh, yeah, but... I'm not surprised. I mean, I have to say that uh, although Britain is supposedly uh, politically correct with all of this stuff, there are many people who have concerns about this kind of stuff, but their voices are silent. And as a teacher, yeah, I've kind of seen some things that I think, oh, that doesn't seem quite right. But if you voice an opinion about it, you're, well, you're kind of not breaking the law exactly, but you're drawing attention to yourself. And bearing in mind, the government is now passing laws uh, which in some ways restrict our opinions, like these protests, for example. They brought in a new law which is some kind of incitement to hatred so you can object, but you have to do it in a way where no one gets alarmed. And you also have to do it in a way that respects the law. So 
it's very hard to protest. So clearly parents feel that they, in this case, at least have some input into the local school library. Um, yeah, but I, I don't know how that fits in with Britain's view of um, freedom of expression. But yeah, I mean, it's very obvious to me as a British man that there's many British people with strong views, but we have to respect the law even if we don't agree with it. Another story about libraries, uh, something very similar, is about Wales. And the Daily Mail has reported that libraries across Wales uh, have been told that they must promote anti-racism. And local librarians, and presumably library assistants, you know, most people who work in libraries here are not uh, librarians at all. Um, they are library assistants. You know, they have no formal training. They just go there and do the job. I think, for example, around here where I live, there's one librarian, and she'll be the, the boss, you know, the mama <laughs> of the, the library staff. But most of them aren't actually librarians. Uh, it says here, libraries across Wales <clears throat> have been given the task of promoting anti-racism. They're being taught critical whiteness studies Mm. as well as how to deal with problems such as the dominant paradigm of whiteness. Um, and they've been told that librarians should avoid racist venues or any building that's ever been associated with slavery. Um, they're saying here, Libraries are places associated with rationality, enlightened thinking, and public service for the general public. They're not playthings for politicians. Um, yeah, so that's a really big deal here. Uh, library staff are being told to avoid any building that has links with slavery. So that could include even as a tourist going to visit uh, you know, an old mansion house that was once owned by somebody who had slaves. I mean, for example, around where I live, um, some of the wealthy landowners had slaves during the 19th century, and they started to remove uh, information about him from local museums, removing statues or changing street names. That's very common here. Um, and that's something which has already started. So they're telling librarians, avoid these places because we don't want you to, uh, you know, be in any way associated with um, slavery or racism. But, I mean, if I go to a museum, I'm not going to stop and think, oh dear, I wonder if um, Mr. Smith uh, will be in that museum or a picture of him because he was a slave owner. I don't think there's um, any um, anything like that comes across our minds. But uh, they're being told that they need to think about that. Yeah. But what's most surprising for me today uh, in this report, I have to say, is this bit about more and more libraries being handed over to volunteers. Because when I was a kid, to work in the library was a job for life. It was a very respectable job. In fact, uh, you know, when a job is earmarked for you, when we think of nepotism, nepotism is when uh, you know, you work for a company and you get your brother in uh, because you work there. Let's say you're the boss and you say, oh, I'm going to employ my brother. And you don't put it through the, the fair trial, you know, you know, by interviewing other people first. Then uh, that's called nepotism. When you show favoritism to your family, 
and uh, these things are quite rife. But uh, yeah, people used to say here, nepotism uh, was very common, and that people who worked in libraries were handpicked for the job from the local communities because they they always used to employ the same kind of people, and these people tended to be. Mm, pillars of the community. They tended to be from certain families or certain churches or had very conservative views, but they were always very quiet people. And you just knew that they came from <laughs> a better part of town than you did. And uh, many of them were little old ladies, of course, who hadn't been married. Um, they saw themselves as pillars and guardians of a moral society. Of course, that's all changed now. But, uh, yeah, many people believe that to work in a library, you had to kind of know someone to get you in. But uh, not only because of nepotism, but government jobs generally in the old days were considered um, uh, to be somehow hard to get unless you were in the system or knew someone who was in the system. It's definitely not like that now, but uh, in the 70s and 80s, there was a lot of debate about that. But anyway, very interesting. So just to recap then before we finish, two stories here, one saying that books are being removed and we should be concerned about that. And another one saying that in Wales, staff are being trained to, uh, well, it looks like not to uh, see themselves as only white and to have anti-racism training as part of their roles. Yeah, libraries, as I recall, in Barcelona, when I lived there, police weren't allowed to go into universities uh, so if there was any problem riots or anything police weren't allowed to go inside if I remember correctly because it was a place which was considered to be enlightened and had uh, protection from the law I don't know if it's still like that but um, yeah that's something which uh, some countries have enshrined that educational facilities are exempt from the usual legal uh, um, practices of police officers going in. But anyway, that's it from me today. Very interesting about libraries, isn't it? And uh, I'll be telling you more about public libraries in the coming days. See you. Bye.